Oh. 
Luke 15. Changing it up. Well, that don't shock me no more, I don't think. Amen. <laughs> I really feel like this is where God wants me to be tonight. And, you know, sometimes you know, just have that feeling that God just puts it on you. Luke chapter 15, I'm going to start reading in verse 11. Very familiar scripture. We all know this pretty much. Uh, that's memorized. Amen. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riots his living. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave it to him. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Let me just stop right here, and I will just interject this. He's still in the hog bin when he says that. Yeah. And he arose and came to his father when he was yet a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to his father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be married. Lord, we love you. We come back right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. And God, we ask your hand to be upon us right now, God. God, I pray, God, you would move in this church. Lord, you know the need right now, Lord. And God, I don't know why you sent me to here, Lord, but Lord, I'm going to do my very best to preach it in a way, God, that would please you, God. God, I pray right now, Lord, you move through this church. I pray, God, you touch hearts. Lord, maybe there's somebody here that, Lord, is not where they need to be with you, God. Maybe there's somebody here, Lord, that knows what it means to be a Christian, God, but now they're straight away, God. Maybe there's a church member here tonight, God. Lord, and they, they're straying away, God. Have your hand on us right now. And whatever's done, Lord, we want to honor you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. I preached a similar message to this several years ago. But the Lord gave me this, uh, another thought on this just while I do. What I did not lose when I left God. Amen. Think about that. They, there's probably not a person in here, Brother Robert, that has not in some way, shape, or form backslid on God. There's probably not a person in here that can say you've always been perfect. There's probably not a person in here that can say you've always done everything you were supposed to do. Not none of us. Not a one of us can say that, amen? But don't you know something that I did not lose when I left God? Let me go and tell you something. Your preacher did it. I backslid on God. I was saved. I knew I was saved. There's not a doubt in my mind that God saved me. And I backslid on God. I went back to, doing, I went back to the hog pen. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, preacher. But some things I did not lose when I went back to the hog pen. Number one, I did not lose my direction back home. I thank God that I was taught as a child. I knew the way back home. Glory to God. This young man, he found himself in a hog pen. He found he, he knew he knew where he was and he knew he was not supposed to be there. Larry, he knew he was not supposed to be there. But he knew also where he needed to be. He it, the first thing, well, Robert, I, I, I can see is this man is in the hog pen and he, 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 he he's thinking, the father's house. The Father's house. The Father's house. If I could just get back to the Father's house. If I could just get back to Daddy's house. If I could just get back to where I was. How many of you remember that time in your life and you knew you were not where you needed to be with God? You knew that if, 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 if God would call time and you had to stand before God, you'd stand before Him ashamed of where you were. And you knew that you all you just needed was to get back to Him. I knew what I needed. I, I, I knew what I was doing was wrong. I knew, let me tell you something, brother. I knew that drinking.
you was wrong. I had been taught it as a child. I knew it was wrong. I knew cussing was wrong. I had been taught it as a child. I knew it was wrong. I knew the way that I was living was wrong. I knew that. I had been taught it as a child. I knew what the scripture said, Brother Joe. I understood it and I knew it. It was in there. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go when he gets older. He will not depart from it. I, yes, I knew. You know what I'm talking about. Just a few years ago. Miserable lady. Thank God it's miserable. Yes. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. Somebody ought to shout right there that God had you miserable when you backslid on it. God had you miserable when you was in the hospital. And if you're here tonight and you're in the hospital, I hope you're miserable. But you want to love me, I do love you. That's why I hope you're miserable. I hope you're so miserable you can't even walk out of this church. I hope you have to get on your knees on this altar before it's too late and cry out to God and say, God, I'm just sick and tired of being in the hot pen. I don't want to be in the hot pen no more. Lord, and somebody here might be headed that way, and it's time for you to straighten up tonight. Amen. But I did not lose my direction. And I was told I did not lose my conscience. Verse 17, when he came to himself. You see, mama and daddy and them Sunday school teachers put it in there. But I'm the one that had to call to me. See, a lot of times what happens when we get out of the will of God, we don't want to hear that mess. There's somebody here not already mad at me. Come on, Frank. Great. I mean, let me just put it to you, sir. Get mad at me all you want to. But God's the one that's doing it. Amen. 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 I don't know why I ain't got to preach like that on Sunday night. Because oh, God told me to. That's all you need to say. Come on. If you don't like it, take it up with God. But I didn't lose my conscience. I didn't, brother, I, I, didn't, I, I knew what was in there, Brother Tony. Every one of us did. I mean, I, 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 I would lay down at night and I knew what the Bible said. I knew how the Bible talked about Jesus coming back. I knew how the Bible, I, in, my, in my conscience. See, we want to call it conscience, but another way the Bible puts the scoop is Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I think I talked to you on it, Josh. Now, he get your face. You know you ain't where you need to be. You know you know. You ever lay down on the pillow and hear that? You know. You know. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit working through, working through our mind. That's God talking to us. I'm telling you folks, this young man was in the hot pen and his conscience. The Holy Spirit was dealing with him. He, said, he, he just said, if I, when he came to himself, I thank God at the time but I, that I came to myself. I thank God for the time that I realized, hey, I ain't got to live like a hog. I ain't got to live in this slop. I ain't got to this. I ain't got to talk like this. I ain't got to dress like this. I ain't got to look like this. I ain't got to be like this. Hey, I got a heavenly father that loves me. I got a heavenly father that wants me back. I got a heavenly father. And I'm telling you right now, folks, if we'll just listen to what our conscience is telling us with the help of the Holy Ghost, God can help us. Yeah. I knew I was wrong. I knew I was wrong. I didn't mean, let me tell you something, folks. I didn't need no preacher to tell me I was wrong. I didn't read my Bible. Somebody say amen. Oh, God, you should have. Oh, y'all gonna get it from here on out every time the light's there. I didn't need nobody to tell me I was wrong. Billy, I knew I was wrong. When we went to see you that night in that hospital, you knew. You knew. You didn't need us. But every once in a while, it's good to have a reminder. Amen. Amen. If you're here tonight, you know. You know. Ain't, ain't nothing, I, I don't have to point people out real wrong. God's already got on their people. God's already dealing with them right now. Brother Joe, these people here right now are miserable. Because you know. Preach it. You know. I didn't need anybody to tell me I was wrong. I knew I was wrong. I didn't lose my desire to get back on. Look at verse 18. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have said. Notice that I will, I will. Glory to God. I thank God for a time that the Holy Ghost got a, got a hold of me. And it, it worked through Earl, Preacher Earl Hannah going to Orange 
Pittsburgh. Let me tell you something. I knew I was wrong. I, I didn't need nobody to tell me I was wrong. But I'm glad God sent a preacher to slap me upside of my head. Amen. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. I thank God that God sent somebody in my way to tell me, you know you're not supposed to be here. This is not the way you're supposed to be living. You're, you've been saved. You're a child of God. You ain't supposed to be living in a hard pen. Your day is, a, your day is somebody special. Your day is a, a rich man. Your day And you're going to live below the standards that God wants you to. No, I, I thank God that I had somebody to help me get back to where I am. I will arise. I will arise. I will arise. There ought to be somebody here tonight saying in your mind, I will arise. I ain't got to live like this. I will arise. I ain't going to stop. I'm not leaving the church like I came in. I will arise. I will arise. I will arise. This man, he realized that he knew. He didn't, he didn't. He knew his way back home. He had a desire. I want you to understand, so folks, they come upon my life, but I got tired of the drinking. Amen. Preach. Come on, preach. Come on, preach. I'm going to say something, and I've said this for a long time. We got grown men and grown women <coughs> at 30, 40, and 50 years, 60 years old, 70 years old, still doing the same stupid stuff <laughs> that they should have got over when they turned about 20. Amen. Come on. Bridget. <coughs> Amen. Amen. We got people in this building. You skew dealing with the Bible says, when I was a child, I spake with a child, I understood a child, I was a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's time for some people to put away childish things. It's time for us to line up with the word of God. Jesus is coming, amen. Yes. Amen. He's coming. Preach. Yeah. And I blows well, yeah. my mind when I, I talk to grown people. That's right. They tell me I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. That stupid mess you should have got over a long time ago. Preach, you call me stupid? I didn't call you stupid. <laughs> but that is stupid mess you should have got over a long time ago. I want you to understand something, folks. I wanted to raise my children in church. When my brother got saved, my brother come down to an altar, and my brother had a I'm talking about one of them, he didn't drink. He, he, didn't do, he didn't smoke. He didn't do any, any of that kind of stuff. <coughs> but I'm talking about cuss like a sailor. A filthy man. His children were still young. He come down to the altar and he looked up at me. He said, I don't want to raise my kids like this. You know why he said that? Because he wasn't raised like that. He knew better. Folks, there's got to come a time in our lives that I want you to understand so folks, I, I did not lose my desire. I didn't want to live like that. I had a desire to do what's right. I had a desire in my life to live the Christian life that God wanted me to live. Amen. That ought to be our desire. Yes. I didn't lose my will. First, He said, I will arise. You see, <coughs> we come down and we pray. And I thought about this a lot around this altar, how God's answered prayer around this altar. We come down here and we pray for healing. And God heals. Amen. I mean, we don't have one healed tonight. Amen. 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 I mean, from, from there, here, to back out there, heal. Yeah. Amen. By the to heal, glory to God. Somebody ought to shout right there. Yeah. Amen. Heal. Amen. Didn't take a pill. Didn't take a shot. Amen. Just got a hold of God. See, God can do that. God can do that. But you know what God can't do? Somebody goes to the parts of the that God can't do. Well, yeah, it is. That's the things God can't do. He can't make you get right with Him. Come on, Rick. This man found himself in a hog pen. He found himself down there. He knew he was not where he needed to be. And he understood he's the one that's got to make the choice. Hey, the Bible, you know, we sing that song, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin and left a Christmas thing. He washed me white as snow. Jesus, the price has already been paid. You say, preacher, I, I know what it is. I've been saved, but I'm back soon. Hey, I mean, first John 1 9 said, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin. Hey, Jesus, come on. Jesus paid the price for my future sins, glory to God. You've got to understand that. 
Your price has been paid. You just got to line up your will with his will. Amen. Amen. He ain't going to make you do it. God's trying to get somebody's attention. He ain't going to make you do it. You got to want to. You got to want to. How many of us really want to? Want you to notice something else? I did not lose the knowledge of a loving father. Yeah. Bear, I knew God loved me. Yeah. All them years you were out there, and I remember hearing you talk about coming home and seeing your mama didn't pray for you. Or hearing them pray for you. You knew. It had it, it done been instilled. Yeah. I remember, I, let me tell you, let me just go back along. I remember Clint as a little boy walking around the farm thinking, man, they got to be God. I remember that as a little boy, don't you? Looking at the stars at night and, and, and looking at the trees. And the Bible says for the invisible things of God are clearly seen. Yeah. Amen. I knew there was a God in heaven. And I knew from a little child, my mama had drilled it into me. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever believed in that should not perish but have everlasting life. But God committed his love towards us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I knew there was a loving God that loved me enough to give his only begotten son so that I didn't have to die and go to hell. And I knew there was a loving God that if I could just get back to him, everything was going to be all right. Now listen. Remember when I paused while we were and told you. When he first uttered those words, I will arise. Where was he at? Yeah. Hmm. If I was going to change the title of the sermon, it'd be this, Brother Terry, Heal in the Heart. Yeah. He had to make his way, Brother Charles, back to the Father's house. Everybody wants to know how in the world the father never questioned it. The father just run up to him, Billy, and hugged him around the neck and put the ring on his finger and put the robe on him and put the shoes on. You want to know why his father did that? Because he was already forgiven. Amen. Already forgiven. You said, preacher, what are you talking about? I'm trying to tell you in your mess tonight, Jesus can forgive you in your mess. You can't stay in your mess and stay forgiven. I'm telling you, you got to get out of the heart pit and get back to the Father's house. you got to get out of the heart pit and get back to where you can get cleaned up. you got to get out of the heart pit and get back to where you can get a ring on your finger and a roll on your back and shoes on your feet. But I'm telling you right now, on the authority of God's Word, all you got to do is ask and you can be healed in your heart pit. I will arise. I will arise. How many of us tonight realize that if not been for God, you'd still be in that heart Amen. And if not been for God, where would you be? And all it takes. Notice, the father never even asked him. The father never even asked him. Look at what the Bible says. He arose and came to his father. But, but, when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, "The Father, I have sinned against heaven and in sight, and no more worthy to be called thy son." But there's two buts so far I read to you right there. But the father said to the servants, "He never said nothing to his son, brother Robert. He said to the servants, yeah. he never stopped being a son." Come on, a lot of people don't want to hear that. A lot of people don't like, don't like that. He never stopped being a son. I'm telling you right now, you might be in the heart of tonight, but you're still one of his children. You haven't talked that line yet. You ain't, hey, he, ain't, he ain't served divorce papers on you yet. He ain't torn the papers on you. I'm telling you right now, you might be in the heart of him, but he still loves you. He said to the servant, just go get a ring, go get a robe, go get some shoes, and put it, this is my son. This is my son. And God's sick of you living like you're living. Because you're one of his children. 
I'm going to try. Hey. Think about it as you listen to me. You better hurry up and get right. Yeah. Because that same loving God could cut you off. Just like that. And just give you that hog pen. Well, Robert, can you sing, please forgive me? You got that coming. <coughs> I don't know what everybody's doing. I don't know what you're going to do tonight. I believe with all my heart, God bless you with this message. I believe that with all my heart. I don't know nobody's heart in this field. But I know what God tells me to do. God, we love you. Lord, you know every need in this building right now, God. Or maybe just Christians needed to hear this tonight. God,